Hi guys, it's Rizzo. I wanted to do a video regarding Dexcom G6. Just kind of a little quick what you need to know before using it, before buying it, or maybe you have been using it for just a little while and have questions or issues that pop up and are looking just to find information. I'm gonna adjust this. So Ace, my kitty cat, is right here. So you might see his tail flipping around every now and then. Hopefully he doesn't knock it over. For some reason, he always wants to say hi when I'm on video. So first things first, doesn't matter if you're a type one or type two, Dexcom is great for anyone who has diabetes and needs to know or would like to know their blood sugars and not have to poke your finger 24 seven. It is an amazing tool, 100% worth it. I chose the Dexcom G6 for three reasons. One, it has an alarm system that goes off when I'm too high or too low. Two, it also allows me to set a pre-alarm to that alarm so I can fix my blood sugars before it actually happens. Uh, third, you can get email a family and friends and put it into their system and they can actually also get low and high alarms and they can actually set those and readjust them to whatever they want them to be. So if you yourself, you know, get an alarm and you're not waking up, they can check on you or do whatever they need to do to get to you. So amazing. That's what sold me. <laughs> it is a great tool. Um, hundred percent worth the cost. So let's talk about cost. It's expensive. Uh, depending on what your insurance is, if you have insurance, whether you have deductibles that need to be met. Um, I have to pay full price for it the very first time I purchase it through the year and then my deductible kicks in after a while or once I meet my deductible, then my price comes down a little bit, but it's still very expensive for me to use, but I will do it as long as I can because it is a lifesaver. Um, how I bought um, or get the Dexcom is I went through my doctor's office. I don't think it matters, you know, whether you use a family physician or like your endo. Um, I use my diabetic doctor and they were awesome. They helped me fill out paperwork. The insurance company got a hold of me. Um, my insurance, I have to purchase uh, my sensors through a mail in pharmacy. So I get three months supply every three months. It works amazing. They do check before they send it every three months just to make sure I want it and everything you know is fine to do. Um, just know that there's two ways to receive that information of the sensor. So you can either purchase their receiver or you can use your cell phone with an app on it. Personally, my insurance, the cost of both of those were the same. So I chose just to use my phone versus buying another device that costs the same price as another cell phone. You can have both though, just so you know. There's people that do both. Um, as far as the device itself, before you use it the very first time, um, it's nice to kind of have a little bit of confidence, like you know what you're doing. It's always nerve wracking the very first time you do it. I do have two videos out there on how to insert the Dexcom G6 and how to remove it. So if you want just a little extra confidence before doing it yourself the first time, have a look at those and hopefully that'll boost your confidence, but it doesn't hurt to put it on and it is super easy. Once you get the hang of it, you'll fly through it. So no worries there. If you have any allergies to adhesives, uh, definitely check with your doctor because the course, the sensor has, you know, adhesive on it. So if you have sensitive skin, be prepared um, to watch for those sensitivities and to check with your doctor and know what to do if it happens. Some people do develop an allergy after a while um, to the device too. So always check with your doctor on what works best for you and how to deal with that. I personally have been using it for almost a year and don't have any um, skin issues with the Dexcom. 
and placement is different for everyone it seems. Um, Dexcom has a manual that tells exactly where you're supposed to keep it at. Um, adults, it's supposed to be on your abdomen only. Um, under like from two to 17, I think it is. It's like the back of your arms, the top of your buttocks area. I personally used my stomach for about the first, I would say two months. And then I am very active with doing exercising, things like that. Um, and started having issues where it wasn't going, it wasn't staying on for the full 10 days. So I actually tried the back of my arms and found out that I have more fatty tissue back there. So it actually works better for me back there. But if you call Dexcom, they will educate you and let you know where you're supposed to keep it at only. So, but I have tried um, on the outer side of my thighs. I did not have enough fatty tissue there, so it did not work for me. And I totally wasted a sensor trying to put it in a different area. Um, but a lot of people, you know, have great results with using it in other areas. So just know that Dexcom does not recommend it anywhere but your belly. And yeah, so you use it at your own risk anywhere else. Um, I do not work for Dexcom, by the way, like none of this, I'm not sponsored. So just so that is out of the way too. <laughs> but all right, so placements, you kind of know all about that. And then I think another one to just be aware about is bleeders. We call them bleeders. It is when you put on a sensor and for some reason you hit a spot and it just starts bleeding. Um, this happened to me the first time yesterday and that's what kind of sparked this video because a lot of times they say bleeders are readers. So what I did was um, it didn't bleed when I put on the sensor. It bled after I put the transmitter in there and like pushed it and you hear the two clicks. That was sensitive and kind of hurt. Um, and I knew it probably was going to bleed and it did. So um, the little transmitter sensor area all filled up with blood, but it never came out of that. But I have seen where it kind of goes out of that sometimes. So I personally just put my arm up and tried to relax it. And eventually, of course, it stopped bleeding. And during that two hour boot up uh, period, it stopped and the readings came on. And that was yesterday and I've had no problems with my readings. So, so far so good. I'm leaving it on. That's my personal choice. It doesn't hurt. Um, and I quit bleeding. I took a shower, kind of rinsed out that plastic area on the sensor so it's yeah it's all good so i'm gonna leave it and see how it goes hopefully it'll still last the 10 days um <clears throat> false compression low so if you put a lot of pressure on the sensor whether it's you fall asleep on it you're you know leaning up against something sometimes that will cause what we call a a false low alarm so it'll of course do an alarm saying you're 35 for a blood sugar and you check your blood sugar and you are actually like at 101. So just know that can happen too. So if they're laying on it, leaning on it, putting pressure on it, it can give off a false low. As soon as you take that pressure off, wait about five, 10 minutes, it will go back up to your normal readings. Um, as far as the Dexcom itself, the little sticker, you know, that it, has on it. Um, it's small and it's white colored. You don't have to have a cover over it. Um, I personally ch choose to cover it just because it looks very medical to me. So I wanted to have fun with it and I also am very active. I have had it where like the corners would come up a little bit so that's why I personally chose to get some covers to go over that. And I do have two reviews on two different brands out there on videos. One is Cover My Dexcom G6 with Skin Grip. And the other one is Cover My Dexcom G6 with um, not just a patch and there's a part one and two. And I also use Pump 
peels. I have not done a review. I need to because it is my number one that I use um, every time I put on a new sensor. But just know you don't have to have them. Um, it's just, you know, everyone has their reasoning whether or not they want to use them and um, yeah, and which ones you want to use and why. So um, for me, it's mainly looks and for um, actually keeping it to stay put. So typically it just depends on my week. There's days where I can get that regular one to stay put for like up to 10 days with no problem. There's times where I've had to put like all three patches to cover it, to keep it on for 10 days. So it just depends. Um, ears. Let's talk about those real fast because they are common and there's a lot of things you can do to prevent them. So <clears throat> the Dexcom also will have some errors that pop up. The main ones that pop up are just like a regular connection error, which says, you know, it can take up to an hour. There's the sensor error, which can take up to three hours. And then there's the calibration error, which is a very common, it seems, and is a big topic. So first, let's just start with the basics of the top three things you can do to prevent these errors from coming on. One is to stay hydrated. Um, the CGMs are, you know, getting your blood sugars from your tissue. The more hydrated you are, the better results and readings you're going to get. Two, stay within 20 feet of your reading device at all times. If you accidentally leave your cell phone at home and go into town and get gas, you're further than 20 feet apart, they're not going to connect. They're not gonna get the reading. So when you come back home, you have to get within the 20 feet distance. It can take up to 15 minutes, but it always comes back on and you'll start getting your readings again. And the third one I think is very important to know is if you're using your cell phone with the app, you have to keep the app open in the background of your phone at all times. If you swipe it closed and forget, it's not going to be on. It's not going to get those readings. So just know that you got to kind of have that app on in the background at all times on your phone. So the calibration error, this is <laughs> a subject that either people say yes to calibrate or absolutely do not calibrate. I do have a video out on that also. Uh, I think it's called, should I calibrate yes or no? And it's different for everyone. Even since I made that video, there's been some changes and I need to probably do a little update on it. But just know that if you decide to calibrate, that when you do the calibration, put in the calibration one, one time. And if it is way off, I'm thinking like over 20 point difference, somewhere between 15 and 20 points difference from your finger poke, it will send a calibration error because it's off so much. And in that case, it will have you recalibrate it like in another <laughs> 15 minutes being lovey. Um, so just know that. And you can get stuck in like a five hour calibration every 15 minutes if you don't do it correctly. And I can honestly say that because it has happened to me even since I've done that video. Thank you for the kisses. I love you too. Um, so if you are way, way off in points from your Dexcom and your finger poke, give it time for it to kind of get closer together before trying to calibrate. Otherwise you will get stuck in that <laughs> time frame of having to do a calibration every 15 minutes in the longest run that I've had is five hours. Now I did not take off my sensor. I just kept doing the calibrations. It's a pain in the butt, but it eventually came back on and was very close and worked the rest of the time. So. If you have questions about that, feel free to definitely put some in the comments and I will help you as much as I can on how to deal with those if you get stuck in that rut. <laughs> All right, so 
make sure you guys if you want to hit the subscribe button hit the like button um i'm new at youtube and i am trying to get my numbers up to at least a thousand subscribers so just know it doesn't cost you anything to hit subscribe and hit the like button put comments down um i'm doing this to help other people that are going through what i am going through and so if you guys have any subjects you'd like to see me do, or if you have any certain questions you'd like me to answer on another video, let me know. I'd be more than happy to help any way that I can. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.